I made a video a couple of weeks ago looking at the announcement of the Super Retrocade, a brand new plug and play console from Retrobit. With more than 90 arcade and console hits from companies like Capcom and Data East and a $60 asking price, this upcoming system seemed like a killer deal. But this is the same company that gave us the disappointing generations plug and play device last year. So I approached the announcement with guarded optimism. I needed to play the system for myself to make sure history didn't repeat itself. Well, good news, because I've now played the Super Retrocade and I'm ready to let out a big sigh of relief. After spending some time with the system, games, interface, and controller, I can now answer every question you could possibly have. Today we're going to spend some time going over the finer details, comparing the two Retrobit systems, and even announcing more games. Let's go ahead and start with the first question. Have any more games been added since your last video? Let's go ahead and bring up that list of games so everybody knows what we're talking about. These are the titles that were announced just a couple of weeks ago. As you can see, a majority of them come from Capcom, while there's a small smattering of Data East titles. There have been some additions since I posted my last video, including the arcade version of Ghosts and Goblins, as well as both the NES and arcade versions of Bionic Commando. There are also six more Data East games worth mentioning, starting with the arcade port of Boogie Wings, a forgotten gem of a 2D shoot 'em up that needs to be played immediately. Other additions include the helicopter shooter Cobra Command, a one-on-one -on -one fighting game called Mutant Fighters, and the Super NES version of Super Birdie Rush. We'll also be getting the Super Famicom port of Magical Drop, as well as the arcade sequel, Magical Drop 2. And yes, those games are entirely in Japanese. The biggest news is that I'm finally able to reveal the remaining two companies with games in the Super Retrocade. Up first is Technos, who have confirmed six games for the system. Look for the arcade versions of the original Double Dragon, Double Dragon 3, The Rosetta Stone, Exciting Hour, The Pro Wrestling Network, Renegade, Super Dodgeball, and The Combat Tribes. On top of Technos, I'm also able to confirm that we'll be seeing a bunch of games from one of my favorite old school developers, Irem. Unfortunately, I can't confirm Irem's contributions just yet, but there are a lot of big games that you're going to be extremely happy about. Stay tuned for more information. Is it better than the Retrobit Generations? Now that we have the revised game list dealt with, it's time to answer the burning question. Is the Super Retrocade better than the Generations? Simply put, the answer is a resounding yes. But you don't have to take my word for it, because I've captured a bunch of footage to show you the difference between these two models. Let's start with Captain Commando, one of a handful of games that has been featured on both Retrobit consoles. As you can see from this demonstration, Captain Commando runs slow on the generations. It kind of sputters along to the point where it even impacts the music. The performance is real bad. Here's the same portion of Captain Commando running on the Super Retro K. This is a marked improvement over the generations, with both the games and music running much smoother this time around. It's a big improvement. And it's not just Captain Commando, as you can see from Ghouls and Ghosts. Here it is on the Generations. And now here's the exact same thing on the Super Retrocade. Need another example? Here's Murks on the Generations. It looks like they removed half the frames of animation. Now we see it running on the Super Retrocade, and it looks and feels exactly like the Genesis cartridge I've owned for 27 years. These are not isolated incidents to make the new hardware look good. These games run better across the board. Every game I played ran faster and smoother than their generation's counterpart, and the new additions all felt like the arcade and console versions I remember playing back in the 1980s and 90s. I'm not going to say it's perfect, but the emulation is a lot better this time around. Did you forget about Forgotten Worlds? 
The problem with the generations wasn't just the emulation was a little off, but also that the games simply didn't play right. The worst offender of this had to be Forgotten Worlds, the Capcom shooter that originally had us rotating the controller in order to spin the hero in 360 degrees. This did not translate well in the generations. In fact, I'd go as far as to say the game is fundamentally broken to the point of being unplayable. So, did they make the same mistake with the Super Retrocade? Thankfully, they did not. I'm pleased to report that Forgotten Worlds is finally playable, thanks in large part to the two shoulder buttons spinning our hero around. This setup may not perfectly recreate the arcade experience, but it's the closest we're going to get without having a spinning joystick. They also took this approach with Heavy Barrel and Midnight Resistance, two run-and-gun shooters with similar control schemes. Like I said, it's not perfect, but it's a whole lot better than it was on the Generations. Do you like the new controller? After being a bit disappointed by the fake Sega 6-button controller that came with the Generations, I took a more cautious, wait-and-see approach with the Super Retrocade. The good news is that it's comfortable to hold and seemed responsive when playing the fast-paced arcade games. It's not a perfect pad by any stretch of the imagination, but I don't have too many complaints. Let me put it this way. It works well when playing the Super Retrocade, but I'm not sure I'm going to be using it on my computer anytime soon. Speaking of which, it's probably worth mentioning that the Retrobit Generations controller worked with the Super Retrocade, just in case you have one of those sitting around. Unfortunately, it won't work the other way around. I couldn't seem to get my Generations to recognize the newer game pads, which is a little disappointing. How's the new interface? I like it. I mean, it's not going to blow you away with flashy effects, but it's laid out well and is quick to navigate. We basically get a bunch of rows and thumbnails over a hazy purple background. You'll be able to see the names of the games as you highlight over the thumbnail, and I like that it differentiates between the arcade and console versions of the game. It's quick and gets the job done. The actual game screens don't give you a lot of information, but there are a few things worth mentioning. We see the genre, publisher, and where the game came from along with the short description of the story. I appreciate that it shows the controls on the screen, as well as a way to add the games to our favorites. If you press the select button, you'll be able to bring up a menu where you can adjust the volume, change the controller layout, and switch between the original aspect ratio and a stretched widescreen look. There's one more thing that I want to show you about the interface. If you go back to the main menu and press the X button, you'll pull up a search menu that'll let us organize based on the game's name, the, the publishers, the genre, and the system. This is also where you'll pull up your favorites folder, which turned out to be a lot more convenient than I was expecting. There are a few things about the interface I would change, but it's good for the most part. Does it have any cheat functionality? You mean built in? No. I know that some emulators have Game Genie and other cheat devices programmed right into the system, but there's nothing like that here. About the most you can do on a system level is save and load your progress at any time, which can certainly be cheating in certain games. On that note, you're still able to use the cheats, tips, and passwords that were programmed right into the individual games. I went through and tested out a bunch of them, and they seemed to work. I was able to do the 63 lives trick in Bad Dudes, Pull up the sound test in Joe and Mac. Access the level select in Super Ghouls and Ghosts. And skip to the final boss in Codename Viper. But here's the thing you have to keep in mind. Most of the games in this package come from the arcade, where cheat codes are scarce. You also won't be able to tinker with the dip switches and option menus so common with arcade cabinets. That's a little disappointing, but at least we get unlimited credits, right? Will it contain cheap shovelware games to pad out the lineup? This is a problem a lot of people had with the Retrobit Generations. While it housed some genuine classics like 1942, Ring King, and R-Type 3, it also featured a bunch of indie homebrew games that felt completely out of place. There's nothing like that in the Super Retrocade. Every game in this package will come from either Capcom, Data East, Technos, or Irem. They all come from the 1980s and 90s, and were originally released in either the arcade or on popular home consoles. There's no filler here, unless you count the multiple versions of Mirths, Magical Drop, and Bad Dudes. Will it support adding ROMs through an SD card? I think you already know the answer to this one. Officially, the Super Retrocade will not allow you to add more games. That said, this is 2017, and any system with USB ports or an SD slot is destined to get hacked. 
That's what happened with the Generations, and I suspect that's gonna happen here, too. But if you're hoping to simply load up the SD card with a bunch of ROMs and have them working right out of the box, then prepare to be disappointed. I went into this a bit skeptical and came out a believer. The firmware I played is not yet complete, so I'm holding out hope that some of the few issues I still have with the system will be resolved before launch. That said, there really aren't that many problems to be concerned about. The emulation is significantly better than what we saw with the generations, and the game lineup is fantastic. There's a great mix of big hits and hidden gems. And don't forget about Irem, which has an incredible library of games that may or may not be included on this plug-and-play console. It's clear that Retrobit has listened to the criticism and applied it to this new product. I like that, and I dig the Super Retrocade. Let me know if there are any questions I missed in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer them. Hey, thanks for watching my hands-on look at the Super Retro K. So here's the question of the day. Beyond the four companies featured in the system, what old-school arcade company would you like to see included in a future Retro-Bit system? There's no question that Sega and Midway would be great, but I'd probably pick SNK. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. In other news, I'm going to be posting my Mutant Football League review on Friday and teeing up yet another episode of the Shoot 'em Up Show. I recommend you click the subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.